So I'm putting together my new package and you, you have two years to pass a bill. Each session is two years long. So uh, this would be the first year and lots of times people introduce a whole bunch of bills, maybe 20 or so the first year and you work on some and you start on some, but you will finish them up the next year. So it's not a big surprise that some don't pack, put, pass. Plus, if you're having financial challenges with the state, anything that costs a lot of money to implement um, is going to be even more difficult to uh, get through the system. So uh, two people walk into my door, um, Russell Long from Blue Water Network and Tim McGavern. No, Tim, I'll come up with it, head of um, Coalition of Clean Air, just a minute, I'll tell you later. So. Two guys come into my front door from two small environmental organizations with this concept. Usually they meet with staff, um, but sometimes if I'm available, I meet with people directly. I usually have a rule of people I know, I always courtesy and meet with them or people from the district, uh, others time permitting. So uh, they talk about this uh, bill that builds on reducing pollutants from the tailpipe of automobiles. Well, when you talk about automobiles and smog, I'm listening because I'm that San Fernando Valley person who couldn't go out for recess and the smog from vehicles. I get it. Warmer days, worse ozone, health impacts. Uh, so this was right after uh, President Bush decided not to move forward with the Kyoto uh, protocols that he had said he was probably going to do when he was elected, but wasn't. And so that's been on all the news. They have this idea of taking the role California has under the Federal Clean Air Act to regulate uh, criteria air pollutants from the tailpipes of automobiles and expand it to greenhouse gas emissions. Makes sense to me, might as well reduce both greenhouse gas emissions and um, uh, help, uh, criteria air pollutants, other ones from automobiles. And I figured you're not going to have different meshes over the tailpipes it's gonna be a multi-benefit win uh, by making the cars operate more cleanly. I sort of got the concept and I thought, well, why not? That makes a lot of sense, sense to me. Um, we know air pollution is what's still a problem in Southern California, especially growing in the Central Valley. My background in Fresno was not not lost on me on air pollution. So uh, I, you know, it, it seemed like something to add to my, bill collection. The opposition felt like this was just going to go away. And what I did is work very hard behind the scenes to build together a coalition where we have a chance to win. So I spent time meeting with individually each legislator, some Republicans as well as Democrats, it didn't matter to me, visited districts, listen to their concerns on air pollution and challenges with this legislation. Uh, sp spent some time with John Burton, who adopted the bill. Not by name, you'll never see, his name is not even part of the bill. He did more than maybe anyone in the Senate in hosting these coalition meetings that were made up of not just environmental groups. That's when I realized if I was going to just leave it with environmental groups, this would never pass. So we got in the American Lung Association and healthcare providers in the discussion on air pollution. You talk about pollution, everyone's with you. Talk about greenhouse gas emissions, somehow it, <laughs> it's not a, a term that people could relate to. And, uh, and you can understand how it affects them individually or personally, they do get air pollution. So to respond to the opposition, uh, a few strategies um, uh, worked, worked well. Uh, one was um, a group of some of the supporters along with myself and people like V. John White and others met with editorial boards of our newspapers who were covering the story and actually about, I think seven of our eight daily papers in the state, this is when everyone read newspapers and there was no social media, right? It might have been more difficult with social media, uh, wrote editorials supporting this bill because cars being the major source of pollution and greenhouse gas emissions. 
And then regarding the false claims of raising taxes, that's what CARB would do and their resources board would do and uh, all these other things. Um, John Burton took my bill, AD 1058, and decided to outfox the opposition. I'm at an automotive conference on greenhouse gas emissions away for the weekend. And, and I'm learning that the Senate is still in session, state Senate, and John Burton is taking my bill contents. I found out about it and dumping it into a new vehicle. I didn't know you could do this. So AB 1058, which was introduced, became AB 1493. It was a vehicle that no longer needed to be done, but was in the same legal area of environmental policies. And so we dumped the exact contents into it, but added four lines, four lines in the bill. And Sheila Kuehl called it the I really mean it section. It was in capitals, letters, and it said, the Air Resources Board cannot raise gas taxes. Well, they can't legally anyway, but these four things that the opposition kept saying they're doing is in the bill. So uh, I had members like from Fresno said to me, that's very helpful because I can just show people they can't do it. Because saying they couldn't do it wasn't enough, but you see, you can't do it. So, <laughs> um, that, that, was, that was incredibly helpful. We had some media attention. We had business people supporting it. We had a broader spectrum than just all of us in the environmental community. The public health people, even the California Medical Association, which didn't traditionally get involved in these kinds of things, got involved in this, plus the nurses and things like that. So uh, we had the right mix. The, the more visible the bill became in Sacramento, the more likely it was to pass because you couldn't just hide from it. You had to make a, make a decision. And the other thing that was unique for this bill, this was the first time the PPIC had their opinion a poll include a section on the environment that came out in July. And there were direct questions on this bill, not by number, but just the policies embedded in it, overwhelming support across Democrats, Republicans, and I don't know if they called them decline to states then or whatever. So, um, and across all demographic groups. So you knew uh, when it comes to air pollution, frankly, water and air pollution, California is usually on the side of cleaner air and cleaner water. So it was a fantastic win. And the challenge is, is that um, California legally under the Federal Clean Air Act were allowed to pass more stringent tailpipe emission standards than the federal government because we predated the Federal Clean Air, air Act that passed in 1970 when I was at Fresno State. And um, ironically, it was signed by, not ironically, but it was signed by President Richard Nixon and our Air Resources Board was created by Governor Ronald Reagan at the response to suburban housewives in Los Angeles who were concerned about smog. So it had a real California bent to it. There were lots of lawsuits by the automobile manufacturers. Um, one provision in the Federal Clean Air Act says that other states can adopt California standards or stay with the weaker federal standards. And we had about, at the time, about 12 states adopt our standards. And so uh, lawsuits were filed by the Automobile Alliance or automobile manufacturers or automobile dealers, that whole makeup of people in uh, several states 